What's going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you week 6 of season 2 of the APA Little Cup League and this week we are up against Ogal and his Golden State War Turtles. and before I get into the team, just a reminder that if you guys like this video please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button as it helps us out a lot and let's do more cool stuff for you guys. But anyway, on to the team. Like I said, we are up against Ogalbina. Um, Ogalbina? Uh, I don't even know. I'm just going to call him Ogal. Uh, <laughs> and his Golden State War Turtles, he will be linked in the description below, so I encourage you guys to check him out. And his team consists of Torchic, Elekid, Drillbur, Frillish, Rowlet, Baneri, Jangmao, Smoochum, Beldum, and Grubbin. And this is the first coach that uh, has a losing record that we were up against, but do not let his record fool you. This team is terrifying, and Ogal, I've seen his games, he's a very solid player. So, yeah, we're really, really going to have our work cut out for us this, this week. But one thing you might notice is that there are a couple changes on my team side, and I know that you guys see the Kabuto that I'm actually bringing this week. So I went ahead and made a couple trades. I was talking with a um, good buddy, Slick Panther, and he and I ended up trading his Cutie Fly and Kabuto for my Amora and his Surskit. He had put Cutie Fly up on the trading block, and so I mean, considering Cutie Fly was a mon that I really wanted to try out and was a mon that was that would look good with my team, I just did my due diligence. I went ahead and asked him, because I mean, there's no harm in asking. I was like, hey, uh, what are you thinking of trading Cutie Fly for something on my team? Like, is there anything that would interest you? And he actually said, well, I would be willing to trade Cutie Fly and Kabuto for your Amora and Surskit because he really did not like Kabuto and was trying to get rid of it. And I was like, yeah, definitely. Kabuto was one of the mons that I was really, really looking for my team and Slick actually sniped me of that. So to be able to have Kabuto at this point was a just the definition of added bonus. So I really feel like the trades helped my team out a ton and I'm already bringing one right off the bat. But so yeah, that's the first thing that is going to be different and I am making another trade next week. It's a little bit less like, a little bit less groundbreaking per se. I'm just trading my Fomantis for Deerling as Kabuto did give me another another hazard control so I really didn't have to worry about the defog from Fomantis and the speed from Deerling as well as three solid abilities is something that I really think that I can take advantage of. But anyway, now onto the actual team that we were bringing this week, Ogal's team is terrifying. I mean, like, Torchic in and of itself, even though it has a very shallow, shallow move pool, I mean, speed boost, if there's one thing I've learned, do not underestimate any Mon that has speed boost. That being said, I have plenty of priority, so I'm not overly worried, but things like the Elekid, the Drillbur, the Smoochum, the Jangmo, in fact, even the Baneri, the Baneri is looking to be the biggest threat, and so it just puts a ton of pressure on my defensive mons, so I'm really going to have to play them smartly and save my offensive mons for the right moments in order to come out on top in this game just because of all the threats that he does have. That being said, the first thing I saw when I looked at his team, he does not have a single Dark Resist, so that meant one thing and one thing only, Choice Scarf Ponyard spamming knockoff every single time it comes in. If Ponyard clicks anything other than knockoff, there are going to be like two situations. There's only, uh, so knockoff and Sucker Punch. Like knockoff, I'm always going to be clicking. Sucker Punch is maybe if the Torch gets out of hand and both of my other priority die. And then Foul Play is specifically for if Jangmo happens to get up to plus two or plus one and it doesn't have an item or plus one and has a Z move, foul play will do a little bit more. And then the brick break is for the Baneri. So those two moves are for very specific situations. I can almost guarantee that I'm only going to be clicking knockoff in this game. But I mean, we'll see what happens. Adamant knockoff from Ponyard is amazing. Scarf is able to outspeed uh, basically all of his team. Torchic at plus one, I'm guessing, like I'm banking on the fact that Torchic is going to be modest and not, or yeah, modest and not timid, because timid can speed tie my Ponyard, but if he's modest, which I'm expecting him to be, I will be able to outspeed it even at plus one, and assuming it has an item, um, I don't know the calc on Z move, obviously, if that 
comes about in the game, I will count that. But either way, knockoff, going to do a crap ton of damage against his team. Adamant for the little bit of extra power, it actually does make a significant difference in the non violite Baneri calc. So that's ultimately why I went with Adamant over Jolly. Next up is going to be the Mon that I think can put in the most work in this game. That is going to be a Life Orb Weak Armor Kabuto with Aqua Jet, Waterfall, Knockoff, and Ice Beam. Ice Beam I opted for over Rock Slide because Ice Beam does hit Jango super effectively, hits Rowlet for four times effective, like it just absolutely demolishes it, and it's just kind of... Oh, mainly for those two. Like, it just hits those two a little bit harder because those two could be uh, nuisances otherwise. Aqua Jet, funnily enough, Oko's Torchic and Drillbur after rocks, assuming I don't get the absolute lowest roll. Like, it just obliterates them, which is really, really funny um, because, I mean, I'm going to be getting my rocks up and with my Sandy Ghast. Uh, I'm assuming is going to be his removal, but Rowlet with Defog could very easily be his removal as well. So, I mean, if I have rocks up and I'm able to keep them up, well, first of all, if he defogs with Rowlet, then I have the potential to get a Defiant boost with Ponyard. And if I get a Defiant boost in Ponyard, there's a decent chance that the game just ends right there because plus two spamming knockoff from a Choice Scarf, ooh, that's going to put him in a world of hurt. So yeah, rocks up. Uh, this Kabuto can do a ton of work. I went with Naughty just because it gives me more power with Aqua Jet, which is probably going to be the move that I'm clicking in order to take out his big threats. Next up is going to be a Choice Scarf Bunnelby. So once again, going with the Double Scarf and... To no one's surprise, I'm bringing a Choice Scarf Bunnelby. Once again, U-Turn, Return, Wild Charge, and Quick Attack. That's really like... I mean, that's just kind of the standard Bunnelby you have. U-Turn, Return, Quick Attack, and then the fourth move is whatever you need it to be. In this case, I went for Wild Charge because that allows me to take care of the Frillish. Went for Adamant because much like Ponyard, I'm able to hit the 15 speed with Adamant and it gives me more power on Quick Attack while still potentially outspeeding the Torchic at plus one. Next up is going to be the first mod in my defensive core. In a defensive with a little bit of special attack investment, Sandy Gast with Shore Up, Earth Power, Shadow Ball, and Giga Drain. This is my main response to his Drillbur, to his Elekid, should it choose to go on the physical offense. And more importantly, it is my answer to his Baneri, which has to run a non-stab Ice Punch in order to do damage to me. And even so, a Life Orb Ice Punch is the only one that can even do what you would consider significant damage, thanks to Sandy Gas just being so freaking bulky. Dual Stab is all I need to hit his team, whereas Giga Drain is nice for being able to recover up HP while still doing damage. I mean, he's probably going to go, like, Drillbur might stay in thinking he could take an Earth Power and try to weaken me down with Earthquake, while well, Giga Drain will be able to heal me up, and the special attack is enough to guarantee the two-hit KO on the standard Eviolite Drillbur, so I will be able to KO that thing to limit him to rocks and like one earthquake or just two earthquakes just basically i give him one less turn to work with which could come in very handy late game next up is going to be my fomantis with synthesis leaf storm hp ice and defog defog was literally just kind of a thrown on move because all i needed were the first three and it was kind of just sort of a all right well what support move i adopted just for defog in case there arises a situation where he has rocks up and I don't, and then I can defog them away. Like if somehow he was able to spin, maybe if he has defog Rowlet and was able to get up rocks of his own, or if rocks are more uh, hindering to me than to him. Basically, I'm not anticipating ever clicking defog, but it's just kind of a fourth move that's an option if I need it. Leaf Storm and HP Ice cover his team nicely. Torchic, I'm planning to have rocks up. So if Torchic wants to come in on a Leaf Storm, has to come in on Leaf Storm and rocks. So very good for me. Otherwise, this is a great switch in to really almost any frillish. So yeah, I'm looking looking forward to seeing what this Fomantis can do in this game. First time bringing it, and unfortunately the last, as like I said, I am trading it. So yeah, Fomantis, let's see what you can do this game. And finally, we are bringing the stick special Bonsly. And I'm not even, like, I'm, I'm saying it's a stick special because it's a tier four that I've brought into uh, brought in, that I've, that I have brung, brought, I don't, I don't English, I'm a math major, and also I'm becoming a doctor, so we don't, we don't English anymore, we just like Latin and medicalese and whatnot, um, <laughs> but Bonsly, I, it's my tier four, it's come to, it's come to five games, I think the only other mons on my team that have come to that many games are my two tier ones in Ponyard and Krogunk and Bunnelby, which is, yeah, which is my favorite mon on the team, so yeah, Bonsly, keeps showing up and i mean if it wasn't doing its job i wouldn't be bringing it so yeah that's why bonds lies there just the very standard although i went with a little bit more spdf in this case just because i mean 
why the heck not? But anyway, that's the team. Let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, here we are in the battle, and the first thing I'm noticing is that there's no Elekids, so that's a relief, but at the same time, there's all the other threats. I was kind of hoping that Jangmao wouldn't come in favor of the Elekid, or that maybe the, um, the whatchamacallit, the Rowlet would come in some capacity, but no, he brought, in my opinion, what was the scariest six for me to deal with. That being said, no dark resist like i said the team builder and kabuto really does look like it can go in if i can get rocks up as he did not bring the rowlet so once rocks are up they are here to stay and unfortunately i'm gonna end up leading with my bonsai line now i say unfortunately because i really really wanted him to lead off or i really really not wanted him i really predicted him to lead off with a dribble i really felt like that was going to be his lead of choices that thing could get up rocks that thing could also oko my bonsai thanks to mold breaker but i just could not risk the potential like sash lead smoochum or uh something to that effect well basically the sash lead smoochum if i let off with my fomantis as he let off with that that would put me in a really really tough spot right off the bat so not risking that i just have to lead with my Bonsly in order to keep him from getting any advantage off of that as he does end up leading with the Drill Burst. So kind of kicking myself, but I still stand by my play as a potential Scarf lead Smoochum, like I said, would have done a ton of damage. And at this point he can, oh, I can just go straight into my Sandy Gast as that was my, that was how I was planning to deal with this uh, right off the bat. And now I'm going to go for the Giga Drain as he goes for a second Earthquake. And Honestly, what I should have done is gone immediately for a shore up as opposed to the Giga Drain. But I mean, as it ends up working out in my favor in this case, I do more damage to him. Well, I recover more damage than he's able. I recover to the point where he's not able to KO me with the next Earthquake. But what I should have done if he was a Violite, I would not have recovered up past the past the point where he would be able to KO me with another Earthquake. So little bit of a misplay right off the bat but it goes in my favor as unfortunately this dribbler does well fortunately and unfortunately this dribbler does not have the aviolite so we're gonna have to play a fun game called find which two mons have the aviolite dribbler is not one of them so yeah i luckily am able to come or uh, recover up to beyond what he's able to do and at this point i'm not going to make the same mistake i'm going to shore up as i know i can take the earthquake as he brings in his smoochum i'm going to go into my bond slide as if he goes for any really just any attack i will be able to take that and recover back up to full with my berry juice allowing me to get my rocks up as he pulls the switch right back into his drober as i'm able to get rocks up and this is kind of the same situation we were at turn one except He's low, and I have rocks up of my own. He goes for his own rocks as Sandy Gas comes back in. A good play on his part. I was tempted to go for the Thief to steal what I'm assuming was a Choice Scarf. Uh, well, actually, it's not a Choice Scarf. As we do see, he goes for the Earthquake. But at the time, I was kind of thinking that the Drillbur would be a Choice Scarf. And honestly, a Bonsly at uh, 15 speed with Rock Tomb would have done a pretty good chunk against his team. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what item the drober was as the giga drain damage unless i just got like a ridiculous no it couldn't have been buried you or it couldn't have been a violet so not sure what item this drober was but either way it will go down to the earth power from sandy gast as now his spinner is gone so my rocks are here to stay meaning that i don't have to bother with my bonsai anymore like i can just kind of get rid of it as he brings in his jangmo kind of figured he would try to go for the dragon dance i was just going to go for some damage uh, scout out what type of set he was that reveals he is not a violet so we know that there are two mons without a violet and now i'm just going to sack off the bonsai as i figured he would uh bust his z and just try to take out my sandy gas but bonsai had done its job at that point allows me to bring in my bunnelby go for the quick attack knock out the jangmao and now i'm at a 5-4 advantage and in a really really good position with rocks up he goes into his baneri i don't want to take a fake out i'm just going to pull the switch straight into my sandy gast as i know okay if he wants to predict that fine i just cannot let the baneri be like an offensive set and let it drain punch up to where it's out of range of my pawn yards knockoff because at this range with one round of rocks well with two rounds of rocks a non-Eviolite Baneri is guaranteed in range of Pawn Yard's knockoff. Like, 
once it comes in on rocks again, Ponyard will be able to Oko it guaranteed with knockoff, and that's kind of what I had to do. I just had to keep it in range of Ponyard. I mean, Buneary definitely could be another Violite user, which would just kind of throw the Calc off altogether, but still, I have to play towards that. Buneary is looking to be the biggest threat at this point, so with my Sandy Gast in against the Smoochum, I just want to free switch into my Ponyard because I think if we start playing the prize trade game, I will be able to come out on top thanks to my priority. So I just want to safe switch into my Ponyard. I really thought about trying to switch in to Ponyard to take the Ice Beam at this point, uh, but I ultimately decided that no, too risky of a play. I'm just going to sack my Sandy Gast and uh, then bring in Ponyard as he actually goes for the HP fighting. So he and I were on the same wavelength there as I am able to get Earth Power damage off. And at this point, I was kind of thinking, okay, he overpredicted once. What are the odds he's going to overpredict twice? But that little voice in my head was like, okay, don't do it. He's going to Ice Beam you. He's going to knock you out. You can pull the switch into Ponyard, but Ponyard could get predicted. Like he could go for another HP fighting and just make the God read. Or Ponyard could even potentially be frozen by the Ice Beam, and that would put you in a catastrophic position. So while I really, really wanted to make the read after he overpredicted the first time, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let Sandy Gas take the Ice Beam as my defensive full health Fomantis should be able to take on the combination of Baneri and his Frillish once the Smoochum is gone from knockoff right here as he does end up being a focus ash Smoochum. So my so my fear was kind of confirmed right there but also if I can get rid of the Torchic then my full health defensive Fomantis should be able to win the game. He brings in Baneri and now it's in range of rocks if it's not a Violite and if it is a Violite I want to get rid of that thing I like, I want to get rid of the Aviolite as quickly as possible so that my priority and my Leaf Storm can do the max possible damage. And if he has Drain Punch, well, of course he's going to have Drain Punch. He'll go for it here. As I do, knock off the Aviolite, doesn't kill, and he is able to kill me with the Drain Punch, bring himself back up to a very good amount of HP. And now I'm kind of at a tricky situation. So the Baneri is not Life Orb. Life Orb would have done a crap load of damage to the rest of my team, but the fact that it was a Aviolite means it's going to be doing a little bit less damage, which is very easy for me to deal with. Now, right now, the prize trade is at 3-3, three to three, and he still has a Boneri at very good health. He still has a full health Torchic and a full health Frillish, whereas I have a Bunnelby that, unfortunately, from coming into rocks earlier in the game, is now in range of either Return or Drain Punch to Boneri. So, yeah, that kind of sort of sucked. I have my Fomantis, which... I then have to kind of go for a double switch to try to predict around the Torchic coming in. As if it comes in, it can easily take a Leaf Storm. And then it's a, it's a guessing game of like Fire Blast versus HP Grass. And I really don't want this game to come down to a 50-50 of sorts. I would rather just do what I can do to make this as guaranteed as possible. And the play that I do end up making that does give me the best chance is to go straight into my Kabuto. Because even though I'm only at 19 HP... Kabuto's base defense is so high that I can take the Drain Punch with ease and still be able to have two Life Orb hits left in me. Like, if Buneary goes for Drain Punch, I will be able to get damage off and still have one Life Orb hit left in me in order to take it out or get rid of something else on his team. And if he goes for Drain Punch, my Weak Armor activates meaning that I will outspeed everything on his team so I don't have to bother clicking, clicking like a weak Aqua Jet or something like that. And now with my Kabuto in against his Baneri, I have two plays that I could go for. I could go for the Waterfall, which would just demolish Baneri at this point, even after, well, pretty, pretty good chance after he recovers back up to full with Drain Punch that I'd be able to knock him out. In fact, it was very, I think it was kind of in my favor almost i mean it was it was a roll like it was a roll to knock him out but waterfall into aqua jet guaranteed knocked him out but the play that i end up going for is the knockoff because even though he gets back up to full from potentially drain punch knockoff into aqua jet would knock him out in conjunction with my bunnelby's quick attack and then Fomantis plus bunnelby has the potential to win the game but it also covered the switch into frillish which he ended up doing and i am able to catch that thing break its Cobra Berries, that still does a crap load, and I will be able to knock this thing out, but he decides to save Frillish for the potential Water Absorb Aqua Jet later, and as you can see, Knockoff does 52%, Aqua Jet would have done around 50 as well, so Knockoff into Aqua Jet would have been able to kill the Baneri, and at this point, 
he makes he makes a misplay that costs him the game. I go for the Aqua Jet, although to be fair at this point, the game was kind of mine anyway as Baneri was still in range of... Baneri was in range of Aqua Jet, Frillish was in range of Knockoff, and Torchic was in range of Aqua Jet. So just him switching out Baneri sealed the game for me. But he ends up going for the Fake Out, which gives me weak armor and gives me the speed boost by double. So now I don't even have to bother trying to click Aqua Jet against this Baneri. I can stay in and just knock that thing off, not bother trying to trying to predict around like uh, water absorb shenanigans. So he brings out Torchic, super telegraphed that he's going to go into his Frillish. But again, I don't have to make that play. I can just go straight for the waterfall as with the Frillish comes in, cool, it's at 48%. I will be able to knock it out with a knockoff. And if he tries to go into Torchic, well, two knockoffs from this range. I mean, Torchic's going to come in at like 50%. If one knockoff doesn't KO him, a second knockoff will. So basically, I just have the game on lock at this point. Frillish comes in, I'm able to knock him off, KO him after he regained health with the Water Absorb, and the Torchic is going to come in. I'm just going to go straight for the Waterfall as he needs double protect in order to... Well, actually, he at this point, he needs triple protect in order to outspeed me, and even in the end, I still had Aqua Jet and Quick Attack from both my Bunnelby and and my Kabuto. So we are able to take that game 3-0. Kabuto in its first game with us comes through absolutely clutch and whew, that was a heck of a game. Baniri is very, very scary. So is Torchic, Smoochum, and basically every other Mon he brought. So good game, Ogal. I, like I said in our uh, messaging, I would say that I hope to play you again, but I really do not want to have to face this really scary team. So <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.